the, uh, the topic today is um, the, something about perception of Japanese speakers. Um, once Japanese speakers overcome this difficulty, I'm quite sure their English will sound much better. You know, this is something, I mean, uh, it's not a very serious you know, obstacle, and yet very difficult to you know, get rid of on your part. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still wondering why, see. The um, perception test and find out what's wrong uh, is one thing. And the more important than that is the uh, remedy, you know, to overcome that, how to overcome uh, that kind of problem uh, on the part of Japanese speakers. Um, I talked about this topic um, in March this year in Seoul and uh, it's been slightly revised and um, <coughs> amended um, in several uh, points. Uh, this time, three of us uh, come from Seoul. The Dr. Ho Young Lee, the, um, my uh, ex Tishi, and now his successor, uh, my successor that is, um, successor to the professorship in phonetics, in the Department of uh, Linguistics, Seoul National University. This is the topic, um, perception and pronunciation. I you know, changed the title. And also syllable final, not only syllable final consonants, but also uh, consonant clusters. Next one, please. Um, Japanese speakers, uh, they experience difficulty receiving the syllable final consonants. And they also find it very difficult to pronounce the final consonants in languages such as Korean and English. Uh, these languages having the syllable structure, CVC, you know, the final consonants, uh, as well as consonant clusters. <coughs> Next one. Examples. The, 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 the young lady, I mean, Professor uh, Okuran Jong, in Korea, her name is pronounced Ong Nan Jong, actually, but many EPSJ friends call her Japanese way, Okuran Jong. Very charming in a way. Uh, so, without Ong, Ong Nan, there's a clusters again, on mm, and none. And um, um, the Japanese don't like you know, this kind of sequence. So, oku, ran. And then a kimochi, kimchi, kimchi, Korean word kimchi is kimochi. And pap, kohan wa, pap o pap. And uh, if you go to the Japanese Korean restaurant in big cities like uh, Tokyo, Osaka, and uh, Nagoya, you have the uh, menu, you know. And there, the kakuteki is written, kakuteki, kakuteki. Again, there's a kaktu. You don't like that sequence, kt. So you insert vowel u, kakuteki. Japanese is a very good language for singers singing. Yeah. It's like Italian. C B C B C B. This open syllables. I mean, so many. <coughs> and kupa is kupa. And ilbon, nihon, or irubon, etc. Right. Next, please. So this paper attempts to assess objectively the difficulty experienced by the Japanese speakers in perceiving the syllable final consonants and intervocalic consonant clusters in Korean words. Next. Uh, I've used three sets of pre-recorded Korean words and um, it were, they were played to the Japanese speakers. They were told to write down the words that they have heard either in Roman letters or Japanese kana letters or phonetic symbols. 
Each word was played twice for the informants, with a short intervening pause. And the test was carried out twice on the same day for the same informants. Yes. These, this is a word list for the uh, perception test. A, B, C, set A consists of pop, 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 pip, pip, pip. All ending in uh, plosives like p or t or k. But um, as you've heard, uh, unexploded typically. Pop. Not, not puck, but puck. And the B set consists of pa, 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 pip, pip, pip. Three set C is uh, uh, two syllable words like pakka, 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 pakka. Um, something. They're not very happy with you know this. <laughs> oh. <coughs> Next one, please. Um, next one. Um, the um, as I said already, the um, the final syllable final consonant coda was typically unexploded. I mean, they are unexploded in Korean speech normally, but um, also in this test uh, <coughs> they were uh, unexploded. Ah, next one. Next one. The, the informants for the perception test were all Japanese who were either born in Tokyo or lived in Tokyo for more than 10 years and received higher education. Of the seven informants, one was 50 years of age, three were in the 40s, and three in the 30s. Six informants were male, and the only female informant was a professional linguist educated in USA. They all had good background in English, and had experience of travel and residence abroad. It can be said that they were better educated and more conversant with the speech sounds of foreign languages than ordinary Japanese speakers. The highly impressive background of the informants may be said to have significant influence on the interpretation of the results of the test. One of the informants took part only in the first test. Next. The results are as follows. Um, <coughs> the, um, the next one, please. It's a bit easier to uh, explain you know, using these slides. The H, R, W, U, etc. in the middle, uh, they represent the uh, informants, the surname. And they're in session one, session two of the test, and the final consonant put to occur and put to occur in, uh, in each session. Now the um, the K in the case of K, the P one, the um, indicates the P K was heard, misheard rather. As P once, the, the, the person H, informal H, see? And uh, he um, heard K uh, in other place as T once. So K was once heard as P and once as T. Um, interestingly, in the second session, the same, same informant H. Uh, heard K, K sound, as T twice. What else? Um, the R, the informant R, uh, shows the same behavior there. The, um, notice that U, the informant, U, was the lady professor, a lady uh, doctor, 
um, educated in USA. She didn't make any mistakes there, you see. It's quite clear. The uh, next informant, I made tremendous, I mean, many mistakes, I mean, in all cases. For instance, he um, misheard T as P once, and uh, he didn't mention anything, you know, he didn't write down anything for this sound three times. Zero, that is. The, uh, one can see that this table two summarily shows the perceptual errors for the relevant plosive sounds and the number of times that the errors were made. For instance, zero four in the upper left should read, he was not heard four times in the first test and uh, 04P2 in the lower end column of T should read T was not heard four times and it was misheard as P twice, etc. Next one, please. This is the um, comprehensive sort of, you know, the compressed table. <coughs> so, um, in the case of T, um, the, uh, it was heard as a zero nine times, and K seven times. And um, T was heard in, in the next column as P once, and K was heard as misheard three times as P, and four times as T. So total number of errors amount to 28 etc. So total the errors P7, T16, K24. You know, strangely, you know, as we move from the outer lip position to the alveolar and villa, okuni ikuto, ikuhodo. It grows, you know, the more errors occur in the back side than in the front. That is, P yori wa T ga mai. T yori wa, no, no. T ga waru ii. So, shite K wa motto aru. This is the um, table showing the individual test results for intervocalic consonant clusters. Clusters. Now, in session one, now there's a KK cluster, well, we can call it German, germination rather, the, the you know, sequence of the same the homogenic consonants, KK. And then TK was heard as KK, see? And PK as KK, PT as TT. KP as PP, KT as TT by the man H. Um, his performance uh, improved a bit in the second session. You see, if we, as we repeat the session, perception test, I can see there's, an, there's improvement, you know. Um, another point is worth noting in this table is the Japanese speakers prefer you know, prefer the germination PP, the same consonant sequence TT and KK rather than combination of different consonants like KPU, PTU, TK very economical um, the um, the able lady who made one mistake in this cluster test, that is, KT was uh, misheard as PT. Um, let's move on to the next one, please. Um, yes, I've already uh, talked about this. Uh, next one. Yes, this is the um, sort of compressed uh, table 
um, incorporating the individual results given earlier. So in session one, the KK uh, uh, mistake was, I mean, it's not a single mistake in KK, but TK was heard as KK three times. PK was misheard as KK once, PT as TT three times, KP as PP five times, KT was heard as TT five times and PT once, uh, giving us total errors of 18. In uh, session two, KK was misheard as TK once, no mistakes in TKPK, but in PT it was heard as TT twice, KP three times as PP, KT very heavy here, it was heard as TT three times and TK once, giving us 11 errors in all. So <coughs> let's look at the total, KK once. PK3, PK1, PT5 time, KP9, KT10, total 29. Right, next one, please. As can be seen in the tables 1 and 2, the perception error rate of K was highest. Followed by T and P. T and P. This reveals an interesting fact that the backer a point of articulation, the higher the error rate. Thus, the error rate of bilabial stop is lowest, whereas that of the velar stop, K, with the backest articulation is highest. Next, please. In the perception test, one can one and the same plosive sound occurs four times, and the total number of hearing of a particular plosive for the seven informants is 28. Thus, the sound K marks a 50% error rate, 14 errors out of 28 hearings in the perception test. <coughs> decrease of error rate in the second test. Notice that the error rate has decreased dramatically in the second test. For instance, perhaps not dramatically, but to a certain extent. Uh, for instance, T marked 10 errors in the first test, but only 6 errors in the second test. And uh, similarly, errors of K decreased to 10 errors in the second test from the 14 in the first test. And the total number of errors in the first test was 28, and it decreased to 19 in the second. Right, it's a good improvement, I think. Next one. An interesting tendency is noted in the errors, as can be seen in table two, that is, a backer sound, that is, a plosive with the back, backer articulation point, is perceived as a front sound. Backer sound is heard as a fronter sound, excluding, <coughs> that is, T is all perceived as P, because P is fronter than T in articulation point, and K is misheard as T or P, they're all fronter, aren't they? In particular, T is never perceived as K, you never misunderstand, mis mishear the front of sound as back of sound. And the labial sound P is never misheard as a back of sound T or K, of K, or K. One might characterize this phenomena as a progressive or forward perception errors. This is the word I you know, used for this tendency, progressive. You, know, you like to go forward in terms of Time position in articulation point. Forward, moving forward. This progressive nature of perception errors can well be linked to the point made earlier 
that the better the plosives, the more frequent the error rate. <coughs> Next one, please. Now, coming to the question of intervocalic consonant clusters, the cluster KT marked the highest error rate, followed by KP, PT, TK. The most striking feature here is that the first consonant of the cluster is perceived as the second consonant. The first one, first element, was identified as the second, you know. That is, KT was perceived as TT, KP as PP, and PT as TT, not the other way around. The consonant clusters KT and KP, which mark the highest perception error rate, both begin with K sound. Thus, it can be said that K shows the highest error rate in both the syllable final position and intervocalic clusters. As shown in Table 4, the cluster KK shows only a few errors. This is self-explanatory, considering the fact that Japanese speakers tend to perceive the first consonant as the second consonant, as the cluster, as I mentioned earlier. As each of the six intervocalic clusters occurs only once in the list, it is subject to judgment by seven speakers, and yet KT shows as many as six errors in the first session. Likewise, KP also shows as many as five errors out of seven hearings. Next, please. As in the case of the syllable final perception test, the second session, 11 errors, shows better results than the first one, 18 errors, in the intervocalic consonant perception test. Next one. Conclusion. From the perception test of the syllable final consonants and intervocalic consonant clusters, the Japanese speakers, the following conclusion may be drawn. Next. One, Japanese speakers find it difficult to perceive the unexploded putk, the highest error rate being marked by velar stop K, followed by alveolar T and labial P. Two, Japanese speakers show a strong tendency to make progressive perceptual errors, pro pro progressive errors. That is, K is perceived as the front sound T or P, and T as the front sound P. Next. Three, Japanese speakers show considerable perceptual errors of intervocalic consonant clusters especially clusters beginning with K, such as KT and KP, mark a very high perceptual error rate. This error, this error rate is just as high as the syllable final K. K is always a problem for you. Next. Four, with regard to the intervocalic consonant clusters, the first consonant was identified as the second consonant, and the second consonant was hardly misheard. In fact, the Japanese speakers tend to identify the first consonant as the second consonant of a cluster may, get, may be accounted for by the frequent occurrence in Japanese of homogenic <coughs> consonant clusters like KK, TT, and PP, uh, to which Japanese speakers have been well accustomed to in speaking Japanese. This phenomenon may be attributed to sokon in Japanese. Next. Five. Out of the 47 perceptual errors of the syllable final plosives, 17 errors were related to misperception of place of articulation. Place. Place of articulation. But as many as 31 errors were attributed to the failure to identify or to hear silence, this could be taken as an indication to Japanese speakers Perceptual ability to judge the unexploded implosive stops is very weak. Next. It was found that the perceptual ability varies from person to person, depending on individual linguistic and phonetic background. In the tables 1 and 3, 
informant Wu Yu has made no errors except one in intervocalic consonant cluster, whereas the informant I has made as many as 27 errors in all. 7. The better result in the second session than in the first one could account for the importance of the perceptual training. The more training you get, the more the, um, the listening ability uh, will be obtained. Six, it was found that the perceptual ability of No, 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 next one, please. Ah, that's the uh, end of the conclusion. I'll show you some of the, you know, uh, memorable pictures. Daniel Jones. Have you, I wonder how many of you have, you know, seen his pictures or met him in person. This was taken by me at his, the uh, Gerald's Cross home, the, um, the London suburbs, in uh, 1966 or 7. Six, 1966 or 7, that is over 40 years ago. I was a postgraduate student in London. Uh, I had some, some questions about his cardinal vowel system and um, I wrote to him, he telephoned me, we talked on the phone, his voice was shivering, he's in bad condition, his condi health condition was not very really good. So he wrote me a letter and, and, uh, and we talked over the phone and then uh, he asked me to come to his home. So we had the chat. Uh, I was allowed to talk to him only 15 minutes by a doctor and nurse um, helping him. But I uh, did went on one hour and 30 minutes, and there were knocks on the door every 15 minutes. <laughs> and um, he died, he passed away soon after. He is the founder of the London School of Phonetics, London School of Phonetics, as you know, established the phonetics department at the University College London. And I know many of you Japanese colleagues have been there for study and training and study. <coughs> and um, so he has disseminated, spread the seeds of phonetics all over the world including Japan and Korea, Asia, Africa, South Africa, South America, and so on. There were two great scholars in London, you know, in those period. One, Daniel Jones. The other was J.R. Firth, Firth, F-I-R-T-H. I'm sure many of you know him. He founded the first linguistics department at the University of London, namely at the School of Oriental and African Studies. <coughs> um, Firth has considerable influence on phonological theory, but it's almost, I mean, you know, died out now. But Daniel Jones's influence still, it, it's, it goes on. Next one. Guess who he is? It's me. You remember the door of the phonetics department? Knocking on the door of the phonetics department in 1963, I think it was. I went there in 62. Next one. This is the uh, phonetics laboratory at London University. Ah, it was. Um, uh, I think it's 1967, you know, they had a special uh, feature article on the, uh, the London um, the, uh, School of Phonetics, especially the uh, Phonetics Laboratory. And uh, I happened to be in that laboratory, you know, for this shot. It was, um, this is an article about the, the research Phonetics and Linguistic Research in the University of London. Next one. Ah, that's a um, graduation ceremony, 69. Next one. 
this is current phonetic society emblem. source of human speech, vocal cords, physiological meaning and also it's a oscillation producing sound waves in acoustic terms and also sounds for the Korean alphabet, Korean letter so. Sori is Korean word for sound, so. The first syllable so that resembles this. Next one, please. There you see the uh, Dr. Chung again at my retirement ceremony in 2002 at Seoul University. Next one. Farewell to Tokyo. I spent a year at Tokyo University as a visiting professor, 67 and 8. Next one. Oh, this is. Um, I've spent some time in um, Southeast Asia, especially in uh, northern Thailand. Uh, in the mountain area, there live a lot of various the uh, hill tribes, hill tribes, and they all represent different you know tribes there. I made research on their phonetic and phonological systems in the 19 since. 1964. It was taken in 2000. Next one, please. Yes. Going back to the uh, uh, pronunciation errors of consonant clusters. Japanese and Italians are fond of germinations, as I said. The same consonant, you know, the brothers. TP, TP, KK and not clusters consisting of consonants of different place of articulation, not KP, TK, you know, PT, etc. Let's have some, you know, examples. Italian has the number otto, o -t -t -o. something you like, TT, just like Italians. English, octo, there's KT sequence there. Similarly, otico, Italian otico is optician. There, PT is reduced to, not reduced, but I mean, <coughs> assimilated to rather TT, P disappearing. And sottotitoli, subtitle, Egal subtitle. Sub, sub, ta. So there is a labial and, you know, alveolar, buter. <coughs> And they don't like it in Italy, so it's a sotto. Espresso, coffee, espresso. Express, x, x, x. But um, the K was cut out, and it became espresso. So, Japanese and Italians are very close in this respect, you see. Uh, you have the same, same, you know, same trend in common. Usually, Italians are um, related to Koreans, you know, uh, in their um, temperament and character. <coughs> Italians like singing, so do Koreans, you know. They are very rather active and open-minded. And just like the Irish. So Irish, Korean, and Italians are, uh, you know, grouped. Um, and um, you share the same, you know, interest here. Next one, please. I've made some uh, the, uh, spectrograms, you see, and uh, this is hot coffee, I pronounce it myself, hot coffee. You can see the uh, time measurement there, the, uh, it's from closure to partial release of T, and there's a measurement, the uh, <coughs> uh, and young millisecond. And there's number two means transition from P to K and the three uh, closure period before K and four total time from the closure of T to release of K. So there's 
the one important thing is there's no no you know active sort of uh, the release or plosion of T in hot hot not hot or coffee but hot coffee there's a transition from T to K hardly audible inside the mouth tongue moving of course to K next one. But uh, Japanese speakers normally pronounce this hotto kohi, so ordinary people I mean, not you. Hotto kohi. Now there you have the uh, the interesting TT, you know, hotto, which you are very good at. And then followed by to kohi. Next one. <coughs> For instance, laptop. Laptop. The notebook. There's a PT sequence there. You can see there's 317 second millisecond. You know the silence there. Lap top. I don't know how Japanese would pronounce this. Perhaps laptop. Next one. Cactus. The same thing. Next one. Kakko. Uh, you are very good at it. No problem there. Because it's gemination. And I deliberately pronounced Gakko, Gakko, uh, with a single K. And there's a time difference, of course. <coughs> Next one. Okay. This is Kitte. Kitte and Ippai. The, the uh, story is the same. Next one, please. Um, cup, cup, cup. The, um, there's hardly audible sort of, you know, the, uh, <coughs> the uh, feature coming at the end of P. Um, but if you say kato, kato, kako, then uh, you will see a different picture altogether. Next one. The same thing. Next one, please. Uh, just one uh, 30 seconds. Correct pronunciation of consonant clusters. How to you know, approach it. One, I advise you to lengthen, lengthen closure period of plosives as in cut, ten, it by, and so on. Don't, don't hasten to you know, explode it. Just hold it. Two, deliberate transition of place of articulation uh, that is from T to K, hot coffee. You have to hold the closure and, and carefully and uh, you know, gradually move to the K position without exploding. That's the knack of it. KT, actor, put to laptop, 